Hello there. Very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us here on M7, My Mind Matters. For those of you that are new to us, and this is only a few months old now, uh, M7 for Mondays at 7. Makes it easy to remember, and I'd love to see you here every Monday at 7. So this can be a form of practice that so you can get into the workshop and try and experiment all these things week after week after week after week. If truth be known, weekly isn't really enough. We should be doing this on a daily basis, but weekly is a great start. Certainly better than every month, certainly better than once a year, certainly better than not even trying at all. And what are we trying to do? What are we working on at M7? Well, My Mind Matters is a big clue to that. In fact, this week has been very interesting for me because a couple of things I saw on television that really makes me know this work is important. So I'm going to start with, uh, I guess you could argue it's a bit of a, a sad story. Uh, first of all, I was watching what they call that big music festival, Glastonbury, Glastonbury, forgive me for those of you that love it, uh, Glastonbury. And of course, we got to see Louis Capaldi having a very difficult time. Uh, and it, in fact, it broke my heart to see that happen to him. And because of that, we watched the documentary. There's a documentary on Lewis, and he talks about what, what they're now calling Tourette's. And during that conversation, he says several times that he believes it's down to stress. It's because he's under pressure, because he's got to support everyone around him now, uh, because he has to keep coming out with new songs. Can his second album be as good as his first album? Lots of clues and all the things that he says, which could be making his condition worse and worse and worse. So I did try after, I was so so compelled afterwards to reach out to Luis Capaldi that I wrote to his agent. Um, I, I don't know if these were true or not, but there were certainly phone numbers for Luis Capaldi online. There were uh, email addresses for him. And I tried everything I could to reach out and I haven't heard from him. But uh, the internet, you know, you've heard that thing, uh, what is it, six degrees of connection that it only takes six degrees, six connections, and you can reach out to anybody on the planet. So let's give it a go. If you know somebody that knows Lewis Capaldi, or you know someone that knows his agent or his parents or some of his family, then please reach out and tell him that Paul Beck from, this will be easier for, for you to remember, engagewithsuccess.com, engagewithsuccess.com wants to help him. I absolutely believe, put my hands on my heart, I believe that I can help him with this condition. I believe that I can help Lewis to reduce his stress to the point where he can enjoy his life and get back to where he was, writing songs, having the best time and fulfilling his dream. This is a guy that seems to have everything, but is now struggling with it. Now, the second story that I want to share with you is more of an upside. And in fact, it's also connected to Glastonbury. It's Elton John. And uh, it was great to watch Elton John, and he was spot on. Oh, my goodness. He was still singing incredibly well. I did think, you know, going to be an older fella, maybe beyond his time. Wrong, wrong, wrong. He was spot on. He was fantastic. He was phenomenal. And so I knew that there was a movie about his life. Didn't know what it was about, so I watched it. It's called Rocket Man, if you'd like to see it yourself. I, I believe it's not on, um, what's that called, Netflix? Not on Netflix, but I think we found it on Amazon. Anyway. I had no idea that he had such a tough upbringing. You know, and I know it's a movie and things might be dramatized, might have been worse. It, maybe it, they softened it and his life was worse, but he certainly had a difficult time. He certainly had lots of obstacles to overcome. And then even when he found fame at a very young age, even though he was a millionaire, multi-millionaire at a very young age, he still had struggles and even tried to take his own life on a couple of occasions. It's really worth watching. But of course, he's come out this, the other side of that and he's doing really, really well. Now, I don't know what help he got. Um, it, it certainly shows you that he's gone to clinics and gone for help. But I don't know if it's been coaches, if he's been to see therapists, counsellors. There's all sorts of things that you can do. But that is a wonderful story. Now, both of these, whether you're thinking Lewis or Elton, they're all about the mind. What's going on in here is so important. Your mental fitness can make or break your life. And if you think that is an exaggeration, then listen to this podcast, listen to the things that I share, and, and even take the opportunity, go to the website, go to engagewithsuccess.com, look around it. If you've got questions, reach out to me. There's a contact page on there, but you can also email me, info 
at engagewithsuccess.com and I will happily answer your questions. But all of this comes down to our thoughts. Our thoughts create our reality. And I know that that might sound a bit over the top and that might be something you've heard before and thought that's a load of bull. I promise you, from my own life, it is true. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is a really good way to test your mental fitness. And it's a really good way for you to prove to yourself, prove to yourself that your thoughts create your reality. So I'm going to talk about equanimity. Now, that may be a word that you know, that may not be a word that you know. If you don't know it, feel free to go online and look it up. But ultimately, equanimity is all about being well balanced, you know, like equilibrium. It's along those lines. And so ultimately, what we're talking about here is being able to stay in a, a clear frame of mind, being able to stay well balanced, even when everything around you can be falling apart. So if you've ever seen someone that remains calm and everything seems to be going wrong, then that person has got a great deal of equanimity. And that's really what today is all about. Now, we're going to use the usual three tools to access this equanimity, but this is something you need to work on afterwards. And you can do this day in and day out. And in fact, we now have an app available that can work with you every day of the week to help you reach your state of grace. That's what I like to call it. For those of you new to uh, My Mind Matters, M7 My Mind Matters, um, I teach a system to help you reach success and fulfillment. One without the other is no good. Being successful and unhappy, that would be the Elton John story some years ago. Now I believe he's got all of it. It looks to me like Elton's got the lot. And hey, Elton, if you happen to tune in and watch this, congratulations, you deserve it. You're phenomenal. You've got a brilliant talent. And uh, I, I loved your story. I love the way that you fought for love and eventually you found love. And I'm sure you're bringing up your boys uh, in, in the way that you would love to have been brought up yourself. So congratulations. Lewis, you've got lots and lots of love around you. You are surrounded by it. Everyone wants to support you and you're putting all the pressure on to yourself. Reach out. If somebody knows Lewis, somebody can get hold of him, get him to, to reach out to me. Uh, easiest way is email or via the website. And let's see if we can prove that thoughts create reality. Okay, let's get started because time will fly by. I'm already about seven or eight minutes in. So apologies, but it's good to set the context of what today is all about. Three tools that we always use, and I shake them up slightly uh, week after week after week after week because I want you to have a whole slew of tools that you can work with. What, what are they? Ultimately, we're going to talk about breath work. That's his name out there. I like to call it conscious breathing. So we breathe anyway, yeah, but this is where we tap into it and we use breath to help us calm down. In this case, to help us reach a state of equanimity, or in my world, a state of grace. That's what the first G in engage stands for. Then we're going to go on to mindfulness. And if these are words that you've got preconceptions about, drop all of that. Forget about what you know or what you don't know, or what perhaps you think it might be. And listen to tonight, and more, ex more importantly, experience it. Because one of my mentors often says, words don't teach. And I absolutely believe that. Telling you something, sharing something with you, doesn't mean you believe it. And the only way you're going to get to believe something is if you can experience it. And that's what I try to help you with on My Mind Matters. Come back to this week after week after week after week, and your beliefs will start changing. This is just one tiny degree at a time. That's what you need to change one degree. Don't get me started on that story. I could do another 15 minutes on it. Okay. So mindfulness is our second segment. And then the third segment will be meditation. And again, lots of people are going to have preconceptions of that, but lots of people go, oh, I, I don't want to do mindfulness. I don't want to do meditation. Find out what it's all about. It may well be much more fun than you expect. And you might even experience tonight an incredible sense of feeling good. And that's what this is really, really all about. So I want to take the opportunity to get started. Again, the first thing we're going to do is breath work. So if you're comfortable, I'd like to sit in your chair, straighten your back if you can. A chair's better than the bed, by the way. A chair's better than laying down. If you lay down, there's a very good chance you're going to fall asleep. If you are pooped and exhausted and would just love to get some deep sleep, maybe do that. 
You know, I'm not here to tell you what's right and wrong. And for me, it's all about you getting results. So if you are pooped, if you are stressed out, if you are angry, if you are in a bad place, maybe laying down and listening to this will help you get to a better place. I'm not saying it'll get you to joy and happiness today, but a better place. Maybe you can climb up the ladder of emotions and you can go from anger to being calm. You can go from anger to being somewhere in the middle where you just feel numb, which is a horrible sense and a horrible word to use. But hey, could be better than being angry. So do what you need to do. But ideally, you'll sit in a chair, you'll get your back nice and straight, put your feet on the floor. You can be with shoes. You can be with socks. You can be without shoes. You can be without socks. Bare feet is a nice way to go if you're on a carpet. Uh, it's nice to be able to move your toes and, and wiggle them around. And now hands on top of your legs and close your eyes. And once you've got your eyes closed, what I'd like you to do is start to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose for one, two, three. Hold on to it for one, two, three, and let it out for one, two, three. Hey, take a moment right now just to smile. Keeping your eyes closed, just smile. If you don't feel like smiling, grimace. But get those lips curling up at the ends because we're going to change the way you feel. And feeling is so important because thoughts become emotions. So by working with our thoughts, I like to call that mind mastery. And then our emotions, I call that emotional management. We bring the two together and we get to live in a state of grace. And again, this takes work. This is not easy. This is not an overnight success story. You don't come to M7 once and change your life. But you do it week after week after week and things can change. Things will change. Let's take another nice deep breath in now through the nose for one, two, three, four. Hold on to it for one, two, three, four. And let it out for one, two, three, four. If you are feeling wound up or stressed or angry or anything negative, take a moment when we do the breath out to make some noise. So you could just do a blowing sound like, <sighs> but you could also be a little more guttural. If you need to go, ah, yell it, let it out, let it out. And if you really need to, if you're really angry, then just scream, do something primeval. Ah! And let it out. Clear it all out. Let's go for five now. Now, I know that everyone's going to be angry, so you don't need to do that if you're not angry. And if it's going to make you laugh, if that's fun, then do it. Do it. So in for one, two, three, four, five. Hold on to it for one, two, three, four, five. And let it out for one, two, three, four, five. With your eyes closed, just breathing at your own pace. Allow your mind to wander just a little bit. Think about your day. How was your day today? Have you had a good day? Was it a great day? Was it just another day? Was it an okay day? Was it a really bad day? Did you get angry today? Did you get wound up? Is somebody really pee you off? Did you get a bill through the post that wound you up? Did you get some bad news? All sorts of things happen. What we're talking about tonight is equanimity. Now, equanimity is a state of mental calmness. It's about remaining composed, emotional balance. And you really get to test this in challenging 
or difficult situations. And they're going to come and go, I promise you, even when you get good at this, you will still get challenging or difficult situations. I've had some today. But I promise you, I'm quite calm, I'm composed, I'm not even worried. So equanimity is really about the quality of remaining even-tempered. Centered is a word I like to use, and it shouldn't matter what the external factors are. This is a state of grace, a state of being. Now, equanimity involves having a clear and unbiased perspective. And ultimately, it's about being, well, you don't want to be overly reactive. Becoming overly reactive is not a state of equanimity. That's to frustration, perhaps even anger. Accept things as they are without swept away with intense emotions or judgments. Just stay calm, accept it for what it is, and stay calm. You will be able to move forward much faster if you're not angry. So it's considered to be a really valuable quality in many of the philosophical and spiritual traditions. Buddhism is certainly one. Stoicism, you, again, these are things you're not accustomed to. If you don't know what Buddhism is, probably you've heard of it. Probably got Buddhas in the garden. You might even have a little Buddha in the house on a shelf. And I have Buddha behind me. You'll often see him behind me because he's got his eyes closed. And I believe that is so important to close your eyes and access this other world. We all live in two worlds, the outside world. And that's where the challenges and the difficult situations are. Those are the circumstances and the external factors. And then we have our internal world. And that's where we've got our self-talk. That's where we've got the ability to stay calm and live in that state of grace. Now, developing equanimity can lead to an increased resilience, certainly lead to reduced stress, certainly going to help you with decision-making, and it's going to be great for your relationships as well because you're not going to fly off the handle. You're going to stay calm. You're going to think about it. And the easiest way to access this state when you are getting annoyed, when you are getting frustrated, when you are getting angry, when you can feel the triggers being squeezed is breath work. Now, this all involves cultivating a sense of inner peace and remaining grounded amidst these constant changes and challenges of life. So... Can you imagine right now, just for a moment, while you've got your eyes closed still, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, just imagine something's happened and it's winding you up. Could be a meeting, could be a phone call, could be somebody in front of you. The easiest thing to do without anyone knowing you, eyes open, is to take a nice deep breath in. Take that deep breath in through the nose. Hold on to it. The other person doesn't even need to know and then let it out. Now, if you can get away from the environment, if you can sit in an office on your own, go to your bedroom, if you can sit in the bathroom and breathe deep in and out and in and out, that can help you. Now, there's another breathing. And this can help with your equanimity as well. And that's rapid breathing. So not just breath slowly, but if you want to get into a state where you've got the opportunity to make better decisions, if you need to get into a state where you want to create something, where you want to invent a new idea, where you want to tap into your own creativity, then you can try what we call fire breath. And that's breathing in and out, 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 in and out through your nose. So let's give that a little go right now while we're working on our conscious breath. So on the count of three, we're just going to breathe in and out. I'll do a little example. It's almost like a dragon breathing in and breathing out, and breathing in and breathing out and go for about 30 seconds. But this will help you. So rather than calming you down, this is getting you into a state of creativity. 
a state of joy, a state of happiness. It's almost like when you go for a, a fast, brisk walk, or you get on a treadmill, or you do some exercise, you pump the energy around your body, you pump the oxygen around your body. So on the count of three, we'll do the fire breath in and out through the nose. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Take a moment. If you feel lightheaded, then perhaps stop and don't do it again. If you're not accustomed to this, it can make you feel a little lightheaded. For those of you that are enjoying it, let's have another go on the count of three. One, two, three. Now continue breathing at your own pace. Again, if you're feeling a little lightheaded, then just stop. You should be experiencing that. And that lightheadedness can actually feel quite nice. If it doesn't feel good, then certainly stop. But that's just two ways of breathing. These are two great examples of conscious breathing or breath work as it's called in the mainstream. So this can really help with your awareness and being in the present moment. So again, to calm down, do the slow breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And if you want to pump yourself up, get ready, get excited, a staff meeting perhaps, got to speak to a group of people, got to do something you're not really excited about, then take the opportunity. To do the fast breath the fire breath. Okay, take one last nice long breath in through the nose for one, two, three, four, five. Hold on to it for one, two, three, four, five. And let it out for one, two, three, four, five. And open your eyes when you're ready. Just do it at your own pace. And hopefully that's feeling really, really good. So that's breath work. That's one example of what we can do. And again, I'm a big fan of that because it's so easy to do even when there's lots of people around. If you're feeling anxiety coming on, take that deep breath in. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just take a nice deep breath in, hold on to it and let it out. Just be that one, that one could help you. Okay, now I want to keep going with our journey. Again, we're talking about equanimity. In other words, you're not a accustomed to and I've given you some examples of it let, let me give you a visual image that might help you really gain clarity on equanimity so you've probably heard of an oak tree yeah probably seen an oak tree maybe oak trees near where you live now oak trees tend to live for many many years not just decades but even a hundred years plus and there's a good chance that when it's been very very windy you may have seen on the news or near where you live an oak tree is actually being blown over, even though it spread its roots out and it becomes solid and it is a big, tall, strong tree, the wind can push it over. So its strength actually worked against it in those circumstances. Now, if you're lucky enough to have been to the Caribbean or perhaps live somewhere where it's nice and hot, you may get to see palm trees. And a palm tree can also grow very, very tall, but a palm tree works in a very different way. A palm tree is constantly moving around, not just the leaves, not just the fronds, but the entire tree can be moving around in the wind. And so for that reason, it's far more resilient under a strong windy conditions. And that could even be a hurricane. That could even be a tornado. Now, I'm not saying it will always stay in the ground, but it's got this ability to be far more flexible and wavering, unlike the oak tree. So if you feel like you're a solid oak, maybe then you are set in your ways. Perhaps you've only got this one way of working and you find it difficult to be flexible. Think about the palm tree. Think about the fact that maybe if you aren't as rigid, if you do start to open up your mind and think in new 
in different ways. Think above the crowd. If you take the opportunity to be more flexible, maybe listen to somebody else, try their ideas, perhaps you get the, oh, my phone just fell on the floor. Perhaps you'll get the opportunity to change the way you work. And maybe you'll find that that helps with relationships. Maybe you'll find that helps with stress and anxiety. So just consider that. But I think it's a really good example. Someone shared that idea with me probably two, maybe even three years ago now. And it's always stayed with me. I love that. The oak and the palm tree. So let's move on now to mindfulness. So I want you to, again, get comfortable in the chair. If you need to have a quick stretch before we go into this, it last about 10 minutes. Take a moment just to move your arms. Stand up if you need to. Sit back down. And then when you're ready, put your hands on the top of your legs. And then close your eyes. I'm just going to grab my phone. And that's where the music comes from. And did you notice how calm I stayed, even though I dropped my phone, even though we're broadcasting around the globe? It didn't matter. It's just my phone falling on the floor. And that's the key here. You know, it could be 100,000 people watching. Could be millions of people watching over the, the weeks, the months, the years. But hey, it's no big deal. It's only a big deal if I make it a big deal. It's only a big deal if I think, oh my God, I look so stupid. I look like such an idiot. I didn't. I just dropped my phone. It's no big deal. I hope you understand that. It's a really good example. I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. <laughs> that wasn't a setup. Okay, let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Hold on to it for a moment and let it out through the mouth. Again, if you're still finding a little wound up or feeling a little wound up, rather, then do take the opportunity to make those sounds as it comes out. Let that nervous energy be released. Now, I'm going to share several ideas with you in mindfulness because it can work in many different ways. And I really want to focus on equanimity. So we've done the conscious breathing, the breath work, but now I want to take the opportunity to go into the mindfulness, which is going to work in a similar way, but I'm going to give you lots of different ways to access it. So one of the first things about equanimity is it can give you emotional regulation, emotional management. It allows you to observe your thoughts and your emotions without getting swept away by them. And that is equanimity. You get the opportunity just to observe what's going on. You're going to almost like have an out of body experience, step out of your mind and just observe yourself. And by doing this, by cultivating a non judgmental an accepting attitude towards your experiences, you've got the opportunity to develop the ability to regulate and manage your emotions. And these are powerful skills. Now, that could help you prevent impulsive reactions, and that can certainly promote a more balanced response. So you can, again, deal with these challenging situations. Now, in mindfulness, what we talk about is detachment from thoughts. And this helps you to recognize that your thoughts are just passing events. They're not necessarily true. They're not necessarily accurate. It's just the thought we get. It's a reflection of reality. And through this mindfulness, again, we can learn to observe our thoughts without getting caught up in them. This helps us be clearer on our perspective. And this really helps us foster equanimity. Now, again, I've just given you a few reasons why we're doing this. And we're going to actually experience it. We're going to the how. So the next one is acceptance of impermanence. Because everything will change. Everything's constantly changing. And mindfulness teaches us to embrace the transient nature of all experiences. I hope that makes sense. And that's pleasant and unpleasant ones. You know, they're not all good, are they? So mindfulness helps you to recognize that everything changes. Everything changes. Change is absolutely guaranteed. And by embracing impermanence, 
you can become less resistant to the, the inevitable fluctuations and uncertainties of life. There's one more big one, really, for mindfulness, and that's present moment focus. So mindfulness can anchor you in the present moment. It can allow you to fully engage. Obviously, engage is a very important word for me. It can help you fully engage with what is happening right now. And by directing your attention to the present, you become less preoccupied, certainly with the past. And that could be regrets, that could be concerns, that could be pain, anxiety. But it also keeps you away from the future worries. What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen in a week? What's going to happen in a month? And that can lead you down a, a road of panic. So this focus on the present moment really fosters equanimity by allowing you to fully experience and respond to each moment with clarity and composure. So let's, let's do a few examples of that. Again, you've got your eyes closed. And I want you to do that because then you can really focus on my words. And that stops you focusing on everything that's going on around you. But you can do mindfulness with your eyes open. It's really, really important to bear in mind. Because again, that means these are tools that you can use even when you're in public, even when you're with other people, even when you're in front of the kids, the family, uh, in a meeting, you can access these at any time. That's so, so important. So whilst we've got our eyes closed, let's take a moment just to think about what's going on in our head. With our eyes closed, just allow yourself to think, see the thoughts coming in and out. Your mind might be wondering, if it's wondering right now and you'd stop listening to me, that is not a problem. That is typical, that is normal. That is the human condition. So the moment you realize that your mind has wandered, and this could have happened when you're chatting to a partner, the other half, the kids, and your mind's already thinking about tomorrow. How am I going to deal with that tomorrow? And yet they're talking to you. Ever had that? So sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Could, could I get you to repeat that? Because you were somewhere else. And again, this is a perfect example of the fact that we live in two worlds. The outer world, that could be your partner, your boss, a member of staff talking to you, and the inner world is where your mind is. It could be somewhere else completely. I hope that makes sense. This is really, really important. So for a moment, just allow your mind to wander. And just notice what you're thinking. I'm going to be quiet. Just let the music play. Just see where your mind takes you. Okay, now here's a little exercise. As you're doing that, and you're allowing the thoughts to come and go and come and go. And you may be thinking on one particular thing. You might find that one thought led you to another, to another, to another, to another. Notice that you're almost talking to yourself. Self-talk. This is, again, very natural, very normal. And unfortunately, it's more normal for the self-talk to be negative. We have two sides of the brain, and in one part of the brain, we absolutely focus on the negative. This is survival mode. This is the brain trying to help us stay safe. And so it's looking for all the negative things, all the things that could go wrong, all the things that could lead us into danger. And that can be pretty scary. But there's another part of the brain that can help us build resilience, build courage, build confidence. That's what we need to access. Unfortunately, it's about 
three to one, three negative thoughts for every positive thought. And again, if your mind is stuck in the past, thinking about yesterday, the week before, the month before, the year before, the decade before, decades before, some people still stuck in those tragic memories of their childhood. And they can't let it go. And you're pulling yourself backward time and time again. And that's what we want to break away from. Now, it's great to have a compelling future, move towards that future. But then some people are so busy thinking about where they're going to be and they'll be happy when they get this and when they get that, that again, it stresses them out. It gives them anxiety, it makes them unhappy because they haven't got it yet. So really, your happiness, your fulfillment is in the moment. So if you can, just watch your thoughts. And again, here's a visual to do that. Imagine that you're standing on a bridge over a railway track. And the thoughts are just like trains passing underneath. And the thought comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes. And you just stood on the bridge unaffected by it just watching it come and watching it go that's what we mean when we're talking about non-attachment that's what we mean when we talk about taking ourselves away from those thoughts so they come through you can see them you can hear them you can experience them but you take the opportunity just to notice them just to recognize them and not to react to them. This is the non-attachment. Just observe the thoughts. And there's a stream of thoughts constantly coming through. We get somewhere between 40 and 60,000 thoughts a day. Some neuroscientists now saying as many as 90,000 thoughts a day. That's got to be exhausting. So just step aside and notice them. And imagine coming from under the bridge and continuing their journey. And that's easy to do with your eyes closed. Now, I want to share some with you. You can keep your eyes closed if you wish and play with these ideas. But you can do them with your eyes open. So the five senses are a great, great way to go. So first of all, if you did have your eyes open, you can pay attention to anything. If you're in your bedroom, it could be a headboard. Just notice the headboard in far more detail. Look at its color. Look at its shapes. Look at the shades on it, the, the shadows it creates. If you're in the lounge, maybe look at the wallpaper. If you're watching this online, maybe notice your laptop or your phone in more detail. The size of it, the shape of it, the fact it's got curved corners or straight corners or how reflective the glass is, or maybe it's got a crack in the screen. Just pay exquisite attention to detail. This brings you into the present moment. So that's using sight. Then you can hear sound. So think about what you can hear in the distance, the furthest away possible. Let me take the music away for a moment. That will help you think and focus on what's in the distance. Can you hear cars outside, birds outside? Maybe a window's open, you can hear people outside. Maybe you can hear the wind rustling through the leaves. Planes overhead. Maybe it's raining where you are. You can hear the rain gently dropping. Okay, now bring the focus of the sound, the closest sound possible to you. What can you hear near you? Perhaps it's inside the house. Maybe it's inside the same room. Maybe you can hear the kids or somebody in your family next door. Maybe you can hear your own breathing, breathing in. And breathing out. So that's sound. Let's go on to touch. Again, you can do this with your eyes closed or open. Just take the moment right now with your hands on your legs. To either feel the skin 
on your legs, or maybe you've got jeans on, trousers on, a skirt on. It's just started raining here. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. So that's sight and sound. Now we've moved on to touch. Now let's move on to smell. Just take a moment to see if you can smell anything where you are. Put all your attention on smell. Maybe somebody's cooking. Maybe you can smell the fish, the curry, the spaghetti bolognese sauce. There's all sorts of things it could be. Maybe they're frying and you can smell the oil. Maybe it's your own fragrance. Perfume on, aftershave on. And then finally, taste. The taste is a fun one. Again, this is something you can do every time you eat. You can eat your breakfast mindfully. And it's a great way to start the day. If you can get mindful first thing in the morning, what a great way to start your day. This can really help you get in a good, calm place. And that's going to set you up for an equanimous day. Just notice the cornflakes. Notice the cereal in your mouth, the milk. And not just the taste, but what about the temperature? in your mouth can you taste the coldness of the milk or sense the coldness of the milk or maybe you have warmed milk with porridge can you sense the heat coming through so use your tongue use your mouth to experience things in a mindful way and that of course could be lunch it could be dinner it could be a packet crisp it can be a bar of chocolate's a good one Choc if you're a chocoholic you will love it just have one tiny little square of chocolate and love it and mindful eating can be great. If you're trying to lose weight, if that's something you're focused on, eating mindfully can help you to really enjoy what you're eating and can help you reduce the amount of food that you eat. So that could be a useful tool. Okay, I want to move on to meditation. So when you're ready, take a moment to open your eyes. And we're going to move on to meditation. So mindfulness, giving you the opportunity to set yourself apart from the body. Take yourself outside and observe. That's the key word here. Observe what's going on, but don't react to it. And that's equanimity at its very, very best. So breathing can help you get there. Mindfulness can help you get there. Now we're going to go into meditation. So again, I like to go breathing to mindfulness to meditation because I feel like it's a deeper and then a deeper dive. The deepest dive is with meditation. So we will be breathing. We'll have our eyes closed. But then I'm going to give you a guided meditation. If you've never done meditation before, I'm confident you'll love it. It's very easy to do. And uh, over the coming weeks and months, I will do lots of different ways of meditating. Currently, I'm sticking to the probably a handful of different ways because I want to get you comfortable with what we do. Again, more and more people join this week after week after week after week, and I want to give you the opportunity to catch up and enjoy and not feel like you're behind. Okay, when you're ready, close your eyes, get comfortable in your chair, have a little wiggle around if you need to. Take the opportunity to shake it all out and feel good, feel relaxed. Hopefully you are feeling relaxed now. And whilst you're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, I want you to start imagining a little sunshine, a little ball of sunlight, four, five, six inches in front of your eyes. About the size of a tennis ball, it's rotating, round and round it goes. And as it's so close, as it's only four, five inches, six inches away, you can feel the heat from that miniature sunshine. And I always mention this because I find it fascinating, but the sun itself, the real sunshine, is 93 million miles away. And yet we can sit on our planet and enjoy the radiance of the sunshine. How cool is that? 93 million miles away. So just take a moment to think about that and the epicness of our world. 
How epic is the life that we live? That we can be 93 million miles away from the sun and enjoy its radiance and enjoy its daylight all day long. And then when it goes on the other side of the planet, because the sun doesn't go away, it's just on the other side of the planet, and then we're in the shadow, our own shadow, the shadow of the earth. And it goes dark. And it gives us the chance to see all the stars glittering in the sky. And they're glittering because the sun is reflecting off of them. And then that light reflects back down to us. And we can see the stars in the sky. And there are millions and millions and millions of them. And something I heard this week, which I thought was amazing. I'd not heard it before. Somebody asked, how big is the universe or the universe is? How big are they? And the answer was, imagine that if all the universes were the oceans on the earth, all the sea that covers the earth, the Med, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the Australian Ocean, all of these, all these bodies of water, imagine all of those, our universe, the one that we're in right here, right now, the one that we can see, it's like taking one cup of water out of all those oceans. It's infinite. It goes on forever. Doesn't that let you know there's something more to life than what we believe in? There's something more to life than just going to work and coming home and paying the bills. Just think about the awesomeness of our world. Maybe tonight, if you get a chance, go outside and look into the dark sky. Look at the stars. And just be in awe. Okay, let's get back to that sunshine. That miniature sunshine just in front of us, four, five, six inches away, rotating. Now that heat is creating pools of light above our eyes. And in the world's our eyes are building up two pools of light. Very relaxing. Almost like sunbathing when you feel really relaxed on holiday. There's pools of light building up over the eyes. And now that light can penetrate the skin and goes around the eyes. Almost like it's massaging the entire eyeball. It's restful. It's relaxing. It's loving. And take that energy from the eyes and put it onto the bridge of the nose. And from the bridge of the nose, have it continuous journey up now onto the forehead. And on the forehead, imagine that light massaging the forehead. If you need to, massage your forehead. I suggest you put your thumbs on your temples and rub your four fingers over your forehead. And whilst you're doing that, Take a moment to feel the skin, feel the sensation of your fingers, feel the heat, feel the sweat. And that will be mindfulness now during our meditation. Just taking a moment to really focus on the sensations. Now taking that heat up from the forehead, take it up onto the scalp of the head. And again, if you want to, you can massage the scalp of your head if you've been for a haircut maybe they do that for you they offer to do it often and it's very relaxing you get the hair wet they pull it all back and then they start to shampoo it oh my goodness that feels good if that's an offer if they charge for it pay for it it's worth it it feels so good and now taking that energy that heat that love up over the scalp coming down across the back of the head now towards the back of the neck focus the energy now on the back of your neck now if the back of your neck is somewhere where you feel stress and anxiety and tension release it let it go allow it to be released now bring that energy from the back of the neck onto the shoulders the left and the right if you can feel the stress there and many people harbor their anxiety their stress their negative en energy in their shoulders. Just move them around gently and release that negative energy. Let it out. Let it go. Put a little smile on your face as you feel it 
dissipating into the ether. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Now let's take that energy down our right arm. So focus on the right shoulder. Bring it down now over the biceps and the triceps and moving towards the elbow. From the elbow, come down over the forearm. Bring that light now into the wrist. See it rotating. Feel it rotating around your wrist. If you've got aches and pains there, allow them to be released. Now bring it into the palm of the hand and imagine a beam of light coming out through your thumb and then your index finger, middle finger, third finger and fourth finger. Four beams of light from the fingers, a fifth beam of light out through that right thumb. Let's do the same down the left-hand side. Left shoulder now, bringing that light whirling around, biceps and the triceps, down into the elbow. Any aches or pains in that elbow, let it go, release it. Down into the forearm, coming into the wrist. And from the wrist, bring that light into the palm of the hand and see it coming out through the left thumb. And then index finger, middle finger, third finger, fourth finger, the little pinky. Five beams of light coming out through the left hand. Now we're going to take that energy from the back of the neck round to the front of the neck. Got a sore throat? Anything of that nature? Imagine it soothing, calming, relaxing the neck area. And now we're going to bring it down over the front of the body only. Over the torso, over the chest. And imagine that light again penetrating the skin over the bones, over the rib cage, and now healing and loving and relaxing the heart and the lungs. Coming down now over the top of the body, over the rib cage, down towards the belly. And then inside as well. Feel it penetrating inside the body the liver the pancreas feeling good and now bring it all the way down to the hips and hold it there for a moment now go back to the back of the neck and let's take an opportunity to come down the spine vertebra by vertebra bone by bone slowly making its way down. Bone by bone by bone. It's calming, it's resting, it's relaxing, it feels good. Stretch your spine if you need to. About halfway now. Almost like the energy is coming down a ladder, step by step by step by step. But it's the vertebra. And between each of those vertebrae is a cushion Imagine those being rehydrated because during the day they dry out. If you ever get pain in the back, it can be because they have dehydrated. And stretching can allow them to rehydrate. Making your way down the back of the spine. And just imagine now at the very base and now going beyond that into the tail of the spine. And now bringing that light onto the hips. Around the hips, around the hips, around the hips. Bringing the light down into the buttocks now. Let's go down through the right leg, right buttock, into the top part of the leg, those big muscles now. At the top part of the leg, moving your way down to the knee, into the knee. If you've got any aches or pains in that knee, imagine healing taking place. Aches or pains now being eradicated, being released, allowed to disappear. Continuing down the right leg now, over the calves and the shins, into the ankle, from the ankle into the heel of the foot, the flat of the foot, the arch of the foot, and now bring it forward into the big toe, a beam of light coming out of that big toe. Then your second, third, fourth, and fifth toe, five beams of light out of that right foot. Now coming to the left side, left buttock coming down over those giant muscles, the hamstrings on your left side, moving down towards the knee, that energy, beautiful golden light, white light, healing, relaxing, calming, soothing, loving, moving into the knee, a 
around the knee. Coming down beyond the knee now, into the calf, the shins, into the ankle. Bring it into the ball of the foot. Now bring it into the flat of the foot, the arch of the foot. And now five beams of light coming out first through the big toe, second, third, fourth and fifth toe. Now your entire body is being loved and cared for by this positive energy, this positive light. Feel it now from head to toe. You're submerged in it. Your face, the top of your head, the back of your head, your ears, your neck, your throat, your shoulders, coming down through both arms, into the hands, five beams of light coming out of each hand, coming down through the body, the entire body, outside and in, resting, relaxing, rotating around the hips, through the buttocks, through the top of the legs, hamstrings into the knees, down through the lower part of the legs into the ankles, and five beams of light coming out through each of the feet. Sat there in the chair, you are glowing. You are filling the room that you are in with light. Your energy is filling that room with light. Now for a moment, notice the calmness that you've got. Notice how relaxed you are. This is a state of grace. This is a state of equanimity. This is the state that you want to be in when you're anxious, when you're wound up, when you can feel the energy, even if it feels negative. Take a moment right now to feel that energy coming through. I just want to do some shout outs and there's a lot of uh, messages coming in tonight. Karen, thank you for watching. Appreciate your company. Keith, great to see you here. Thanks for your company too. Good evening to you. Trixie Lou, great to have you here too. Maureen, thank you for your company. Seleni, thank you for your company. Appreciate that. A big shout out across the pond to Michelle. Henry. I want to say a big hello to John. Tim, thank you for your company tonight. Mandy, Nicola, Thomas, Genevieve. Thank you so much for being here. I, I, if you do have questions, I can see some of you have. Uh, don't do them while we're live. But you can always email me. Info at engagewithsuccess.com. Okay, I'm going to bring us to the end of this segment right now. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose for one, two, three, four. Hold on to it for one, two, three, four, and let it out for one, two, three. Four. Let's do it for three. In through the nose for one, two, three. Hold on to it for one, two, three. And let it out for one, two, three. And opening ready. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's been watching this evening or will watch on the podcast or on on YouTube. Easiest way to follow this or go back to previous episodes is go to engagewithsuccess.com and you can find out everything there. If you'd like to reach out to me, feel free to email via the uh, website. And of course, if you'd like me to do a 45 minute presentation for free to your team, to your company, to a corporation, to a charity, then also reach out engagewithsuccess.com. This is Paul Beck signing off. I'll see you again next week on M7 My Mind Matters.